The beauty of doing a boat build like this is there is no shortage of other projects that you can jump on to kind of get yourself straight again. What I'm working on right now is installing the drawer slides for the big massive drawer that's going to be under our um, galley and the settee area. So this whole area here is going to be one really, really wide drawer. And because that crazy width of this drawer, we ended up picking um, sliders that are 265 pound capacity, I believe. So incredibly strong. I have gone through and reinforced this area. Went overbuilt. They do have a nice soft close feature. What it does is it just naturally holds the drawer close. So we don't have to worry about it uh, swinging open. Of course, we're still gonna have a latch on it, but when we're sitting at anchor or anything like that and the boat rocks around, we don't have to worry about it. In designing this and in making this, I made just promise that this was going to be just for like bread and lightweight items, chips, whatever type of thing. But I still know it's gonna end up getting overloaded. So be very cautious. For the, the other ones that are going up here, they're just gonna have plywood inserts bonded um, that I can attach the drawer to. And that's how the drawers will be set up. So you're gonna have multiple connection points. They're a little bit more conventional style. So no real issue with that. This on the other hand, since it's gonna have such high load in it, what it is, I set it up so they can be bonded or screwed directly to the foam core but in the meantime what i'm going to do is decor this area and put in plywood pads so something that you can actually screw to if i need to i can just screw right into that um, on this other side because it's going to be a finished face here i can't necessarily through bolt so i've got to make sure this is strong this is a roughly three quarters of an inch thick um, foam here. What the plan is, is to decor in the areas where the screw points are gonna be. Insert, um, insert some plywood in there, something that I can screw strongly to, and then glass over the top of that. So that's the project for today, is routing out in this section without disturbing and destroying the face on this side, which is the important part. What it is made just a quick little template. This is the this matches the mounting holes and gives me basically three inch pads that are going to go in and um, that I can bond to and then glass over the top to. Laser level position side to side, making sure that's all right. So just use that as a starting point, um, mark this off, then put my template in place, run the router around it, once I clean it up, bond, glass, then start installing the rest of the pieces. <laughs> router, little bushing, guide bushing here. I'm going to start off with a depth of 23 millimeters. Um, that should get me pretty close to that outer skin. The skin that's left is just a um, 12 ounce or like 450 gram fiberglass. So very, very thin. And you can see the light through it right there. So what I gotta do is just get the rest of that foam out to make sure I have a very good surface and I'm bonding it actually just to the skin itself. Um, and then we'll repeat this over on the other side. Mm. 
also going through <laughs> doing that, cleaning it out, you can kind of see my issue. And we come around to our nicely finished side and that. Awesome. So that adds another, I don't even know how much time of trying to fix that and fair it in and reprime it, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> I was being very careful, I thought, but just that last little piece, um, of course, and then it flakes off. Now working on the cabinet drawer slides that are gonna go in for this big, massive cabinet, which is gonna really wanna make sure it's strong, because there's probably gonna be a lot of torque in that of trying to twist this area. Um, what I did is, because of the offset where this wood uh, inserts are going to go in on either side, on this side, I'm able to go with one inch thick of wood shims along the edge. Um, so, be able to give good support there. On this side, I, I don't have that same thing. So, I ended up cutting out, routing out this area and inserted um, wood in there. So now, it's going to give me at least a one inch area to be able to bite in with, with good uh, screws. You will be very happy to know these are plywood pieces from that Hunter 34 that we disposed of. So, it is still reduced, being recycled. reuse, recycle. Exactly. <laughs> it was actually really nice plywood. Uh, so, that's going to go here. I will end up just putting a light glass over the top of it, fiberglass over the top of it, and then the drawer slides will mount to this. Um, seems to be the best way to make sure that I get a lot of strength. I don't necessarily need it in these upper drawers, but down here, since it's spread so far apart, I think having that extra weight, but uh, having that extra strength for screw holding abilities can be well worth it. Today's the day. Finally putting in the pieces that are gonna support our drawers. You'll see on this side, I did actually put the hardwood inserts in here. And again, that's going to allow me to put in nice and big screws in there to hold that big piece. And I milled it down. So it's actually now I think it's 11 millimeters. And this one ends up being like 21 or something like that. It's been a while and I don't remember what it is. So I have those two going in and right here, which you can see my mess of trying to figure out exactly where that's going to go. Two different pieces on for those drawers are gonna get put in place as well. And because I am using plywood, wood, I am actually using epoxy in this. So that is going to be used with the Total Boat uh, epoxy, but I am gonna mix that up with some uh, colloidal silica and cotton flock to a nice consistency. We'll apply that to the back of these boards, stick them into place, and hopefully they'll stay there. If not, I'm gonna have to screw them in and let them uh, cure. Then we can go through and start that process of actually putting in the drawer tracks. Nice looking drawer you got there, I know. Johnson. Finally have the drawer installed uh, after some working uh, to, to make it so it moves smoothly. Now it is doing exactly what we want. Got it already in use. It, it does close on its own, which is the important part. And the biggest thing is, so these are kind of like latching. It takes some pressure to to pull them open, the, the slides here. So. I don't have to really worry about that going open on its own. Yank it open, and it does exactly what I want. Now, if you look, we still have to go through and finish this off a little bit better. Go through and fair out that. There's some high build in here. I think the interior will look fine. I did fair this exterior side already, so started that process. Of course, the whole thing's going to need to be dismantled to paint, um, to paint in here to get this all, but it does seem like it is nice and secure. The last step for this will be once we do the cabinetry, once we actually make the, the faces for this, of course covering this whole thing which will then press up against this and stop that and then some latches and then fill in this piece and that should be all set. Still working on the ones on the inside here. 
the boxes that I made, the, the drawer boxes that I made, uh, weren't exactly parallel. So uh, after I put the tracks in there, you could slide them in and out, but they kind of bound up a little bit. Um, and it was just a little bit too tight. So either I need to go through and um, cut them down and redo them. It's kind of a pain. So I may end up just building those quickly out of plywood because they're not that large and um, do that with those because I'm really over this job and I want this done so I can finally paint these things out and uh, get that so it's finished. They're already super dusty. Everything is. Everything's dusty. Yeah. These are actually stainless steel um, drawer slides that I got. Uh, this is supposed to be able to support 150 pounds, I think, per slide. And then if you look, you can see it on the inside here. This shows where I decored and put plywood blanks in there so I could screw into it, glassed over that from the outside. Um, so that is very, very secure in here. We don't worry about that failing on us at all. Everything else, it's really, really, I think strong, there should be an issue. Still a bit of a problem because it's such a wide setup, uh, not real long and very wide. There's still a little bit of twist that you get in this, but that's just in inevitable with this, um, with that type of dimensions for it. But to me, it seems to be doing really, really well, exactly what I want for sliding. Um, very happy with it. Hey everyone, before we end this episode, I just wanted to bring you some really exciting news that's coming out of Max Cruise today. So of course you know that we are building their 44 foot sailing catamaran and for a little while now they've had their 48 foot sailing catamaran listed, which is really great for the people who are kind of interested in our boat. It still has the amazing performance capabilities, but I mean, if you notice how like narrow our hulls are for that speed, the 48 is just a great step up for more livability, a little more comfort if the 44 seemed a little small. But the big news today is they have just released the Max Cruise 55 sailing catamaran. So for those that like want to go really far, be really comfortable and still keep the same performance, comfort, that is going to be a great option. And for the 44, 48, and 55, they are subdivided into three categories. So let me give you a little bit more information about those. The first option is just the standard base boat. The second option for these boats is going to be the Eco Hybrid with twin hybrid 30 horsepower engines, 30 kilowatt batteries, three kilowatts of solar, electric induction cooktop, and convection microwave. And the last option is going to be the Sport version, and that will have a carbon fiber rotating mast, carbon dagger boards, carbon cassette rudders, an XL main and Genoa, and a Code 65. So if you're like any more information, make sure to go ahead and check out the Max Cruise website. Um, I'll put it up here right now and the clickable link in the description box below. If you have any questions at all, just shoot a message over to Terry. We'll leave his email address there as well. And he is so great about responding. And the wonderful thing about Max Cruise, of course, is that they do the production versions there in Vietnam. And Terry is so great about listening to all of the buyers, making little changes. So if you have something kind of specific, they're really great at tweaking that so head on over there and if you're interested make sure to tell them that we sent you Japan